Welcome to Math Memo. This is 1959 IMO problem number 5. We're given a geometry problem in three parts. To begin, let's draw the diagram. Here's our line AB. And here's M, which is an arbitrary point, so let's make it not the midpoint. And here are the squares AMCD and MBEF. These squares are inscribed in circles with centers P and Q, so let's go about finding P and Q by drawing in lightly the diagonals. Finally, we can draw in our circles. There we go, and we see that the circles intersect at M and N, and N prime is the point of intersection of AF and BC. We're now ready for part A. Prove that points N and M prime coincide. N is defined as lying on both circles, so N is defined as being on the circumference of both circles. If we can prove that N prime also lies on the circumference of the circles, then we're done. So let's try to do that. The blue lines carve out a few triangles, so let's try playing with them. First, let's look at triangles AMF and CMB. And we're going to show that these are congruent because they have the same sides and the same included angle. Why do they have the same sides? Because AM is equal to CM and MF is equal to MB because these are the respective sides of the squares that we have constructed. And angle AMF is equal to angle CMB because both are equal to 90 degrees because they're corners of the squares we've constructed. Let's look at triangles CMB and ABN prime. And we're going to show that these two are similar because they share the same two angles. They share the same values of two angles. So first of all, they share the same angle B. And secondly, by the congruency above, we know that angle MCB is the same as angle N prime AB. Why is this the case? Because angle N prime AB is nothing other than angle FAM, which indeed is equal to angle MCB because the two triangles AMF and CMB are congruent. Therefore, we know that angle A N prime B is equal to angle CMB. And this is crucial, and angle C and B is 90. So angle A and prime B is also 90. Now angle A and prime C is equal to angle A and prime B, which is equal to 90 degrees. This means that the angle A and prime C, which is subtended by the diagonal AC, which is the diameter of the circle with center P, is 90 degrees. This means that the point N prime must lie on the circle with center P by the reverse of the angle in a semicircle theorem. So the angle subtended at the circumference by the diameter is 90 degrees. Now, if we look at angle Fn prime B, that's going to be 180 degrees minus angle A N prime C because these are angles on a straight line. And angle A and prime C is 90, so angle F and prime B must also be 90. So using a similar argument and looking at the circle with center Q, we know that FB is the diameter because it's the diagonal of the circumscribed square. So point N prime, which is subtended by the diameter and 90 degrees, must lie at the circumference. Recall that N is defined as one of the intersections of the two circles, and we have proven so far that N prime lies on both circles, so it's one of the intersections. To be thorough, let's note that M lies on AB, and N prime doesn't, so N prime can only be the other point of intersection, N prime must be N. And we're done for part A. Part B asks us to prove that the line MN passes through some fixed point S, irrespective of the choice of M. So remember, M can be anywhere along the line AB. Let's draw in the line MN like so. And to show what we need to show, we're going to make a few nifty observations. Consider, first of all, AM and CM. 
These are sides of the square AMCD, so AM over MB must be equal to CM over MB, because AM and CM are equal. Now, triangle CMB and triangle ABN are similar, as we've shown previously in part A. This means that CM over MB is equal to AN over NB. And these are matching sides of similar triangles. Therefore, AM over MB, which is equal to CM over MB, must also be equal to AN over NB. This relationship here should look very familiar to us. It should bring to mind the angle bisector theorem, which states that the angle bisector of a triangle divides that angle's opposite side into segments proportional to the other sides of the triangle. So here, if we look at triangle ANB, we're told that AM over MB, which are segments opposite the angle divided by NM, is equal to AN over NB, which are the other two sides of the triangle, we can say that NM is an angle bisector. Specifically, NM bisects angle ANB. Now comes the step which takes a bit of insight. Let's draw a circle around triangle ANB. AB, the diameter subtending an angle of 90 degrees at angle N, which we've shown in part A, but that doesn't really matter here. What matters is that this red line, NM, which goes all the way down to S, so this will be our fixed point S, and we're going to show that this is a fixed point because angle ANM is equal to angle BNM, and equal angles at the circumference must be subtended by equal chords. Since AB is fixed, then S must also be fixed. It must be halfway between A and B because NM is always going to be an angle bisector and the chords subtending those equal angles at the circumference must be equal. So that's AS and SB, which are equal. So S as that fixed midpoint. And we're done for part B. Part C asks us to find the lock S of the midpoints of the segment PQ as M moves along AB. Let's let R be the midpoint of PQ because M is already taken. Let's let the perpendicular distance of P to AB be D1, of Q to AB be D2, and of R to AB be D3. We notice that D1 is going to be half AM because P is the center of a square with side length AM. D2 is half MB because Q is the center of a square with side length MB. And D1 plus D2 gives us half AM plus MB, which is just the entirety of AB. So D1 plus D2 equals half AB, which is a constant. That is to say, it doesn't matter where M is along AB. This is great for us because the height of R, which is D3, is in fact half of D1 plus D2. This can be shown using similar triangles or some properties of parallel lines and transversals. And we absolutely encourage you to explore this for your own interest. But for now, let's push on. So D3 is half D1 plus D2, which is half of a half of AB, which is a quarter AB, which is also a constant and doesn't depend on M. So R is going to be some kind of a horizontal line that is always at a height of a quarter AB above the line AB. But we're not done yet because this is a line segment and we want to know horizontally where does it start and where does it end. For this, let's introduce some more variables. Let xp be the horizontal distance of p from point a, xq be the horizontal distance of point q from point a, and just x be the horizontal distance of point r from point a. And let's consider the extremes. So when m is all the way at point a, then mb is equal to AB and MBEF is the entire square, then the horizontal distance XQ would be half of AB because Q would be half of that big square with base MB which is equal to AB. XP would just be zero because P would be at A. And X is half of XP plus XQ which is half 
of half AB, which is a quarter AB. When M is all the way on the other side at point B, then AM is equal to AB. So AMCD is the only square. XQ is the entirety of AB because Q is now at B. So it's the entirety of the way away from point A. XP is half of AB because P is the center of AMCD, which is now the entire square. X, which is half of XP plus XQ, is here equal to half of 3 on 2 AB, which is 3 quarters AB. What does this mean? It means that horizontally, on one end of the extreme, X is a quarter AB away from A, and on the other end of the extreme, X is 3 quarters AB away from A, which means a quarter AB away from B. So R should look like this. Let's go have a look in GeoGebra. So we're tracing R and as M moves along AB, you can see that R stays at a constant height of a quarter AB above AB. And you see that it basically stays a quarter AB away horizontally from A and B on both ends of R. And that's the end of this memo.